Well, let's watch you Tucker Carlson and then we'll get back to the Democrats. Yourself as you watch the historic tragedy that is Joe Biden's immigration policy. What's the point of this? Nothing about it is an accident, obviously. It's intentional. Joe Biden did it on purpose. But why? Why would a president do this to his own country? No sane first world nation opens its borders to the world, promising the poorest people on the planet that they can have endless free taxpayer funded services if they show up and break your laws. That's not just stupid. It's yeah. Endless taxpayer free service, taxpayer, uh, uh, paid services, dude. Like what? That's insane. What are the services, dude? Isn't this from like April or is he bringing up white genocide again? It's Tucker Carlson. He brings up white genocide every night. He is subtly and sometimes not so subtly promoting the concept of white genocide and how, uh, you know, immigrants are invading every night. Why do we even talk about this windbag? Um, I don't know. Maybe because he's literally spouting Nazi rhetoric on the most popular broadcast in the United States of America. This show is the most popular news show in the country. So the most popular political commentator in the nation is trying to propagandize and agitate people into adopting further white nationalist of white supremacist talking points. Suicidal. For generations, middle-class Americans have had access to the best health care in the world, but not anymore. That's over for good. Our system That's never happened. Hand- he's trying to use, he's trying to use our like horrible social safety nets uh, as, a, as a talking point against like immigration. Like it's the immigrants that ruined our, our uh, social safety nets as though that's the case. And not those who fill Tucker Carlson's pockets, dude. Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm old enough to remember a time when uh, Obamacare is dog shit. It's not enough. And it was basically health transfer back to the pharmaceutical uh, corporation, back to the insurance industry. Uh, but even then, the good provisions within Obamacare, like, uh, you know, um, allowing or, or sorry, making it impossible to deny coverage to those with pre-existing conditions was advocated against uh, it was advocated against regularly on the Tucker Carlson broadcast we're not just Tucker Carlson but like every single fucking republican said that that's horrible and they said it because they were in the pocket of the pharmaceutical industry and the insurance industry and they still are that hasn't changed so this notion that like medicaid expansion is bad that medicaid should not exist that like homeless people are filthy and dirty and lazy like this is what he fucking broadcasts regularly on his platform and then turns around and acts like, oh man, our social safety nets are crippled because fucking, you know, a thousand immigrants uh, came in uh, to the United States of America. Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Disgusting. Handle this many destitute newcomers, period. Imagine what hospitals are going to look like a year from now. How about schools? What Joe Biden is doing now will change this country forever. So again, why is he doing it? There's only one plausible answer. You're not allowed to say it out loud. CNN will attack you if you do. The social media companies will shut you down. The Southern Poverty Law Center will call you dangerous. You could lose your bank account. The left will become completely unhinged and hysterical. And that's how you know it's true. And like without real, without even like mentioning like why this would somehow be bad. He just makes up shit about how like they're going to overcrowd our hospitals, which is bullshit. Even the fucking Libertarian Cato Institute has shown time and time again that um, undocumented immigrants actually are not a fucking burden on our already crippled social safety nets. We have no social safety nets. We never have because of people like Tucker Carlson literally advocating against it and dumbass hogs getting so hyped up on the racism juice that they forget the fucking, they forget that like the wealthy are stealing from them, okay? They're so horny for fucking racist rhetoric that like they end up voting for dumbass uh, Republican politicians who cripple those social safety nets. And then they turn around and they're like, well, you know, it's the immigrants. It's like, no, that's not true. It's literally not true. As far as like emergency room expenditure, undocumented immigrants take up like 0.9%. Okay. It's insane. It's totally made up. This notion that like undocumented immigrants are actually like a burden on our resources is 
fucking totally made up. Totally made up. And yet, this completely made up, easily falsifiable, nonsensical sentiment exists in this country all the time. Let me tell you another racist truth, okay? Whenever people say undocumented immigrants cost $300 billion a year to U.S. taxpayers, you know what they're talking about? They're talking about the children of undocumented immigrants. They're saying that if you have a parent who is not a documented U.S. citizen, then you yourself, despite being born on U.S. soil, should still technically be under the umbrella of undocumented immigration because they can't say that undocumented immigrants as a whole are exhaustive on our systems because that's not true. They pay more in taxes than they take out of the system, okay? There is no rewards to reap regardless. Literally make it seem like if you are born on U.S. soil, you are constitutionally an American citizen, and that's been protected time and time again. And yet, in the minds of the Republican Party's white nativist agitators, that is not a real consideration. If you're not, if you're born into a fucking family where there's one undocumented parent, okay, whether they were a tourist, an immigrant, overstaying on a visa, or someone who crossed the border, doesn't matter, you are not fully an American citizen. The Constitution believes you are. Everyone else believes you are. You can even become president one day, but Tucker Carlson does not because he is a white nationalist. Okay? And these people will lie. They will continue to lie. And most others will never recognize that lie because that's how social conditioning works. That's disgusting, dude. It is so fucking disgusting. Only censor the true things. Nobody gets in trouble for claiming the earth is flat. So it could be risky for us to explain what's actually happening here, but for once, we don't need to do that. Joe Biden himself has already done it for us. Dude, it's not just white agitators, it's xenophobia. So many Chicanos believe in this. It's not about whiteness. No. The concept of that still comes from white supremacy. Chicanos themselves, without recognizing that they are engaging in white supremacist and fascist rhetoric, are getting sucked into that white supremacist and fascist rhetoric. It doesn't matter what their background is. Okay? That's what that is. White, in this term, is a substitute for power. It's not about the white color of your skin. Do you recognize that? Do you understand that? I'm paler than Tucker Carlson, motherfucker. But in the eyes of a white supremacist, I'm not white. Because whiteness is not a real concept. It's a concept created around exclusion and purity. Okay? That's why whiteness is always slated to be reduced. Unless you literally make it illegal to uh, race mix. Which a lot of people used to advocate for back in the day. And some still do. Openly. You understand? When people say there is a great replacement happening and white people are eroding, they want you to believe that white people are being murdered. But what is actually happening is white people are becoming enlightened and not caring about the concept of whiteness, a totally made up fucking falsehood, and having sex with non white people. That's it. And in an effort to combat that, the conservatives that maintain the concept of whiteness and defend it, whether they openly state it or not, because remember, white is a, is a substitute for power here, okay? They will add additional categories of people that they previously did not consider white into the white category. The latest expansion was Hispanics. The only group of people on this planet that will never be considered white or will be under the white umbrella are black people. That's just it. Everyone else, it's open for discussion. The moment that those uh, percentages decrease, welcome to the fucking team, brother. Polish people were not considered white. Slavs were not considered white. Eastern Europeans were not white. Okay? Greek people were not considered white. Irish people were not considered white. Italian people were not considered white. 
Jewish people were not considered white. All of those groups that I just mentioned to you are now white. And not a single person would be like, that's not a white person. What the fuck are you talking about? And the same goes for white Hispanics. If you go far back in American history, German people were not considered white because they were too swarthy. So this entire concept built around like whiteness or white people are being replaced is bullshit. Here's Biden explaining the entire point of mass immigration back in 2015 when he was vice president. An unrelenting stream of immigration, nonstop, nonstop. Folks like me who were Caucasian of European descent for the first time in 2017 will be in an absolute minority in the United States of America. Absolute minority. Fewer than 50% of the people in America from then and on will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a source of our strength. An unrelenting stream of immigration, but why? Well, I don't understand it. Like, why is this a bad thing? Like, why is what Joe Biden said a bad thing? How are you going to fucking freak out about this? It's a video from like 2015 that you fucking clip chimped. Why? Like, well, what's the fucking argument here? Like, I, I want to run it back again. I want to understand. Fewer than 50% of the people in America from then and on will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a source of our strength. Yeah. He's saying diversity is the source of our strength. Diversity is the source of our strength. Why would you have an argument against it? Why would you consider that to be a bad thing? Unless you hate diversity, right? Why? Why do you hate diversity? An unrelenting stream of immigration. But why? Well, Joe Biden just said it. Also, Joe Biden literally, again, has used Title 42, defended Title 42, and has expelled more people than Donald Trump did utilizing Title 42 thus far. 690,000 versus Donald Trump's broke boy ass 440,000. So this notion that like, Joseph Robinette Biden is not doing enough of the border from a t from the perspective of like racist ass, white supremacist ass, white native ass uh, dipshits is wrong. Okay. Unless they just like literally want him to murder people, which, you know, even then they're going to say it's not enough. To change the racial mix of the country. That's the reason to reduce the political power of people whose ancestors lived here and dramatically increase the proportion of Americans newly arrived from the third world. And then Biden went further. He said that non-white DNA is the, quote, source of our strength. Imagine saying that. This is the language of eugenics. It's horrifying. But there's a reason Biden said it. In political terms, this policy is called the Great Replacement, the replacement of legacy Americans with more obedient people from faraway countries. They brag about it all the time. But if you did- He literally never said DNA. He never advocated for eugenics. He basically just said- Diversity is our strength. Saying diversity is our strength is not fucking eugenics. Unless you legitimately hold on to a position that there is like some tangible concept such as whiteness. And that tangible concept is, is uh, something that you can point to with science, actually. Um, there is a term for that. Never mind. It's called scientific racism or race realism. An outdated, uh, an outdated concept that Nazis used to believe in that they kind of got from us actually here in America because we were literally just the best at racism historically. Interesting that he's um, bringing that up without actually openly stating that part. Now, normally when a Nazi says stuff like that, they're a Nazi, so you understand that they're just doing Nazi rhetoric, but that's the brilliance of Tucker Carlson. He doesn't actually say that like, white people are superior and therefore we should protect them or ever talk about why uh, white people are superior. He just simply says, eradicating whiteness is bad and immoral and wrong and is going to harm us because we're bringing in docile people like immigrants. Like using negative associations with immigrants, black immigrants and brown immigrants specifically, 
while simultaneously talking about his ancestors and his heritage and his culture, the culture of whiteness that he won't actually say is whiteness, but that's what he's saying. It's the, the supremacy of American heritage and American culture. What is American heritage and American culture without diversity, which is precisely what fucking Joe Biden is talking about? Dare to say it's happening, they will scream at you with maximum hysteria. And here do you have... To be fair, maybe Biden should explain why he thinks a never-ending stream of immigrants is a source of strength. A never-ending stream of immigrants? Free travel is just a human right, dude. Okay? There are multiple reasons for why, though. Because America, ultimately, is a land of opportunity. So allowing people to come into this country and take advantage of that opportunity because it's the wealthiest nation on Earth and it also is functionally free from being bombed or destabilized by America, okay, people will be able to thrive in this country. We are giving opportunity to so many people by just simply allowing them to exist inside of our borders rather than outside of our borders where they are still subjected to untold amounts of cruelty as a consequence of American imperialism. But there is not a single American that you can point to with the exception of Native Americans that is not several generations into this country. That's the reality. Do you understand? We are a nation of immigrants because we were a colony. We came here. We murdered the native population and we took over. Kind of at the inception of America. That's how America started. A never-ending stream of immigrants is just immigration. And that's how this country has grown. And that's how this country has uh, become what it has become. It's like some of the most positive aspects of American culture is, is diversity. If not the only positive aspect of American culture being diversity. I, hold on, dude. I need like the air purifier. I'm literally having a hard time like getting a headache and having a hard time talking. It's like fucking insane in here right now. One second. I'll be back in a moment. Here, I'll keep playing the video. Joe Biden confirming his motive on tape with a smile on his face. No one who talks like this should ever be the president of the United States. The president of the United States has a moral obligation to represent all Americans equally, not just those of a specific color. For four years, remember, they told you that Donald Trump was a racist. But has anyone ever shown that Trump in his entire life said anything half as disgusting as what Joe Biden said on that tape? He once said when he was in the Oval Office, America would be respected around the globe. That isn't happening. Just the opposite, actually, according to polls. And that will be even worse now that he has called Africa, El Salvador, and Haiti shitholes. Reaction from the United Nations was quick. These are shocking and shameful comments from the President of the United States. I'm sorry, but there's no other word one can use but racist. Uh, you cannot dismiss entire countries and continents as shitholes. No, no one's ever shown that. Now, you're not supposed to notice this, of course, and to keep you from noticing what Joe Biden is doing and why, they are, as always, accusing you of their sins. Here are two sitting members of Congress telling you that it's racist to enforce immigration law. Watch. Congress must do the work of investigating and ensuring accountability of the egregious and white supremacist behavior of Border Patrol agents in Del Rio, Texas. What we witness takes us back hundreds of years. What we witnessed was worse than what we witnessed in slavery. Cowboys with their reins again whipping black people, Haitians, into the water where they're scrambling and falling down when all they're trying to do is escape from violence in their country. It's worse than slavery, enforcing our own laws. That was Maxine Waters. Everything she just said is a lie. The Haitians now in Texas aren't trying to escape violence in their own country. They haven't been in Haiti in years. They have been living in South America. Many even had refugee status in South American countries like- This is true, he's not, that's not a lie. He's right. The answer to that is, so what? No, he's not wrong. He's right. But that doesn't change anything. 
a lot of the Haitian migrants that are currently inside of our borders originally left Haiti as a consequence of the earthquake or our uh, efforts to destabilize Haiti and went to Brazil and then moved into other South American countries and have ultimately now found themselves here in the United States of America. So what? There are plenty of non-black immigrants that are also coming from South American countries. Tucker Carlson hates them as well. So what? That's why this whole like first, uh, first safe harbor law and shit like that are so stupid. I don't understand. There's people coming in from Mexico. There are people escaping problems in Mexico to come to the United States. So how are you going to tell me that a fucking, uh, you know, you know, Haitian person that arrives in Mexico and then comes to the United States should stay in Mexico when those in Mexico are coming to the United States? Chile and Brazil. But that wasn't good enough. They waited for Joe Biden to become president and they came here for the free health care and housing that Joe Biden promised them. So now they have arrived. Why wouldn't they? You would. Who wouldn't? So here's what it looks like tonight in South Texas. A stunning scene more reminiscent of a third world country than the United States. Over 10,000 migrants are crammed underneath the international bridge here after crossing illegally into the United States. Many using sticks, plants, and whatever they can find to build shelter as they wait to be processed by Border Patrol. From above, a Fox News drone reveals the size and scope of the crisis, showing a camp that reached a population of 15,000 at its climax because of this. Over the weekend, we gained exclusive access to a boat on the Rio Grande, and we watched as a constant stream of hundreds of migrants crossed the river from Mexico, entering the United States illegally, hundreds at a time gathering on the shoreline before walking to the bridge. That looks like the country you grew up in? No. We don't have to put up with this. We could solve it in a day. The administration could send these Ooh, how? Let's hear it. people back immediately. Haitians are not bad people. A lot of them are great people. But we have no obligation to let them into our country. American citizens owe no debt. Asian refugees welcome in West Hollywood? Yeah. I mean, I have no problem with that. What a fucking idiotic take. Why? Why would I care, idiot? Why the fuck would I care about immigrants? Like, I, I, I myself have only been in this country since I was 18 years old. ...to Haiti. Haiti was never an American colony. Haiti has been an independent country for more than 200 years, since 1804. And for much of that time, we have sent Haiti a whole lot of aid. Yeah. A whole lot of aid, dude. Yeah, it's great. It's really great. Like me saying I'm giving you a whole lot of aid when I serve the top of the hour ad break to you at 159. That's right. So however sad and dysfunctional Haiti might be, it is not our fault. That's for sure. And yet Joe Biden is now punishing Border Patrol officers who tried to enforce the law, who dared to deter Haitians from entering this country illegally with their reins. They weren't whips. They were reins. It doesn't matter to the Biden administration. The officer's real crime was trying to do their job, trying to stop illegal migration into this country. They have now been suspended. They will likely be fired. Can you imagine oh, no. punishing law? Poor Nazis, dude. That's crazy. Oh, wow, dude. Can you imagine punishing the slave patrol for picking up um, enslaved people that are running away? I mean, that's crazy. How dare you, dude? Classic Tucker Carlson rhetoric, by the way. Not a Nazi, by the way. Every Western power's relation with Haiti is summed up to can't let a country founded by a successful slave rebellion ever be successful on the world stage so our own citizens don't get any ideas. It's fucked up. Yeah. Hey, remember the fucking libs in my chat yesterday or two days ago that were saying, like, those guys aren't, actually weren't whipping people? Now Tucker Carlson is making that same exact argument. And that's actually, that, that, that shows you two things. One, liberals are, of course, always hyper-focused on the aesthetics of conversations rather than the actual fucking, you know, rather than the actual bad problem. 
Why don't you let Haitian migrants into your 3 million mansion that has plenty of space if you were actually consistent with your views, but of course you wouldn't, lolle? Where did this, this... I'm surprised that people haven't said that a lot in the chat so far. Like, how many Haitian people can I fucking fit in my fucking house, dude? By the way, the funny part about that... The funny part about that always is like, you know it's illegal for me to do that, right? Like... Like, there was a dude who was prosecuted for doing exactly that. It's not even fucking legal for me to do that. Like, even if I was like, yeah, I'm down to do it. Like, I'll take in, like, fucking three people. You know? Three out of uh, 15,000. Three out of 15,000. Like, that's gonna fucking solve the issues. Illegal for Harriet Tubman to save slaves didn't stop her? You're right, dude. That's what I should be doing. I should stop everything else that I'm doing. Because ultimately, all of these arguments revolve around, I don't like that you're streaming. Stop streaming and do everything else. Even if what you're doing, personally, will not reach the same level of people, or will not actually have the same amount of... Uh, will not have the same impact. Because that's what it is. For most of the people that get mad at me, it's like, I don't just, I just don't want you to stream. I don't like that you are successful. I don't like that you are on this broadcast. I can't stop myself from fucking watching you despite the fact that I hate you. And that's where a lot of that comes from. We have the resource to take care of them without housing them in our homes. That's it. Saying you should take them is in is asinine. I know. Because that's not a real fucking argument. That's not a real, that's not a fucking real advocate. That's just a person who's like, who thinks that they have one on you. Enforcement for enforcing the law? This is insane. Why do American citizens have a duty to follow the law at this point? That's an honest question. People are gonna start asking that question. The White House spent most of today calling those officers actions horrific. Really, how were they horrific? The White House never told us. That's because no one- They did. They did tell us. They said that the whipping was horrific and like whipping on horseback was horrific, which is true, but that's not the end all be all. The real horrific actions is the fact that you're here streaming instead of going out and just fixing society says a lot. Yes, it does. Like the fact that systemic change cannot be done by a singular individual. It's actually not even a lot, to be honest with you. It's, it's, you have to be really stupid to believe that that's like a legitimate fucking uh, answer. No one ever cared about whether the whip was real or not. Joe Biden's press secretary is an accomplished liar, so she understands the principle well. Here she is in one of the great clips of all time claiming that unlike you, Haitians do not need to show vaccination cards. Why? If somebody walks, into the country, right across the river, does somebody ask them to see their vaccination card? Well, let me explain to you again, Peter, how our process works. As individuals, as individuals come across the border, uh, and uh, they are uh, both assessed for whether they have uh, any symptoms. If they have symptoms, they are the intention is for them to be quarantined. That is our process. They're not intending to stay here for a lengthy period of time. So Haitians enter. Yeah, why don't why don't the why don't the Haitians get vaccinated in Haiti before they come here? Is a really good take. Entering our country illegally. Also, okay, I gotta point this out one more time. Listen, if you're Tucker Carlson, and you regularly talk about how we should not be vaccinating people. Or that like vaccines are scary and it's totally brave to not get vaccinated despite Tucker being vaccinated himself. You don't get to turn around and be like, why aren't the Haitian migrants vaccinated? Okay. Like, which by the way, they should be. And that would be wonderful if we vaccinated them. It would be awesome. We should. Instead of fucking you know, putting Haitian asylum seekers on planes and then shipping them back off to Haiti. 
We should be vaccinating and quarantining them. And then offering them permanent shelter and opportunities for integration. That's what the human thing to do is. They're entering Texas anyway. You know there's an abundance of fucking vaccines there. That the hogs that watch Tucker won't take. Yeah. Give it to the give it to the migrants, dude. Give it to the Haitian immigrants. There you go. It's not like the white folk want to take it anyway. Legally from God knows where are not required to show vaccination cards because, quote, they're not intending to stay here for a lengthy period of time. Really? So let's say you go out to a restaurant in midtown Manhattan. Do you intend to stay in that restaurant for a lengthy period of time for years? No, you just want to have dinner. But in order to get inside, you still need to show a vaccination card. Dude, this is why debate Lord Brain Rot is like up there. Not as bad as like Nazi rhetoric, but like this is precisely why I just absolutely fucking hate, hate debate Lords. Like I just, I can't stand like he, he thinks this is like, he thinks this is an own, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Well, what about the people that are going into a restaurant? They're not permanently staying in the restaurant. Yeah, but it's not like they're fucking flying back. They're permanently in America. Like how he knows there's a difference between this. And also, I'm still a complete advocate for, for you know, vaccinating every immigrant that comes into the U.S. borders to just seek asylum. We should be doing that regardless. So... You know, I'm an advocate for that. Why? Oh, because you were born here. You're not Haitian, so you don't get a pass. Let's be honest, none of these people- like, That's a bad thing. Like, that's not a good thing. It's a bad thing that we're not vaccinating uh, the, the, the asylum seekers. That's- We're ever going home. That's just true. According to the Associated Press, quote, many Haitian migrants camped in the small Texas border town are now being released into the United States. Haitians, one official told the Associated Press, have been freed on a, quote, very, very large scale. Oh, of course. In recent days, Fox News has confirmed that many of these Haitians are not even be giving, being given court dates, as Bill Malugin just told us. They've been giving something called advisory notices requesting that they show up at some point in the future. Any woman... 90% of people show up to those court dates, um, for the record. Because these people legitimately want to be in the country without fear of the Gestapo hunting them. And they have a legitimate stake or, or, or legitimate claim for asylum seeking. So that's another like really horrible lie that people fucking uh, say all the time. It's, it's like nearly every single person that is a court date shows up to that court date. Nearly every single person. No one is showing up to court. He's like, you're wrong. Everyone shows up because they want to fucking seek asylum and legally they are allowed to. So of course they're going to fucking show up. Wonder how many of them disappeared. 10% is quite much. First of all, it's not even 90%. I lied to you. It's, it's bigger than 90%. Okay. And you're never going to get fucking like 4% of people. You're always going to have fucking 4% or 5% of people that don't show up to things. Okay. It's quite a bit much. Yeah, guess what? Here's another fact. Okay? Undocumented immigrants are responsible for significantly less crimes per capita than natural-born U.S. citizens. There's not a lot of data on this, unfortunately. But uh, there was a study conducted in Texas. Originally, they wanted to show that undocumented criminals were actually doing more crime. That data actually disproved the original intentions of the study. It's still being used by the Cato Institute. Again, libertarians, they're the, the last like right wing uh, open border people on the planet. Okay. That study showed that undocumented immigrants are responsible for less crime per capita than natural born U.S. citizens. So whenever people say that undocumented immigrants are actually causing crime, that's also a very common falsehood. It's just an outright lie. Just like saying undocumented immigrants are taking our resources, our social safety nets, they're taking advantage of our social safety nets. That's also a lie. 0.09%.
in emergency room expenditure for undocumented immigrants. And that's the only way that undocumented immigrants can take advantage of our, uh, I guess, healthcare and, and our institutions. And those institutions are horrible to begin with. Not a lot of data equals bullshit narrative. Well, at least I have data. You don't have any data. And that's the reality. I have more data. My side has data. Your side doesn't. Your side just has feelings. Your side has assumptions. Your side has suspicions. Suspicions motivated by like centuries of white supremacist rhetoric that is still being played on national television by people like Tucker Carlson. That's it. So sorry, in the words of Ben Shapiro, facts don't care about your feelings. And honestly, facts don't care about your feelings. And a woman claiming to be pregnant is immediately being waved into the country, no proof necessary. Her child would be instantly an American citizen. Found a source is below 50%. The 90% number is from a singular program and a sample size of 7,000 immigrants. Yeah, dude. Sample sizes for studies actually have to be every single person. That's how studies are conducted. Imagine looking at a fucking solid ass study with 7,000 immigrants and saying that that's not enough. Do you not know how data works? Are you out of your mind? 7,000 is an adequate sample size, more than adequate, beyond adequate. So who are these people exactly, these new Americans? Well, the administration has no idea. None, they have no idea, they don't care. Today, Jen Psaki again admitted she's not even sure how many Haitians have been admitted into the U.S. and how many have been deported. All we know is that several of Haitians trying to gain access to this country appear to be violent. This was the scene at the airport in Port-au-Prince just yesterday. The scene at Port-au-Prince Airport in Haiti is volatile. Angry Haitians dropped off here by the Biden administration throw rocks and shoes at the plane that carried them home. Three U.S. ICE officers were reported injured during incidents on the tarmac. Throwing rocks at ICE officers. Dude, what do you mean, dude? The Biden administration has made it clear it's not going to do anything about this, of course. The governor of Texas isn't doing much about it either. That would be Greg Abbott, a Republican. Oh, fuck. In a matter of moments, Greg Abbott could deploy the National Guard, the Texas National Guard, to shut off the southern... The DOJ says that 92% of asylum seekers have showed up to court hearings from 2013 to 2017. 92% of individuals who filed asylum claims attended their court hearings between the fiscal years of 2013 and 2017, dude. 92%. Asylum seekers released from detention to pursue their claims attend immigration court hearings nearly 100% of the time. That's not a study, by the way. This is just like official data. So that's, this is the one instance, this is the one instance that you will absolutely, like, if it's, if it's data coming from the fucking, uh, you know, from the Department of Homeland Security, then that's like not even a fucking sample size anymore. That's just like literally the actual data. Made up, not valid, bad data. Just like this one. Uh, about 99% of asylum seekers who were not detained or who were previously released from immigration custody showed up to their hearings over the last year. Data from the Transactional Records Access Clearinghouse southern border completely protect his state and the rest of the country. He's refused to do that. Instead, he's just deployed just over 1,000 of the 19,000 troops he controls. Why is that? Why okay, I'm bored. Yeah, okay, we got it, dude. You're racist. Okay, sick. All these daily streams, whether big or whether small, so there he is again, the sun is streaming. The sun is streaming